I don't have much experience when it comes to listening to Falling in Reverse. While I know that they are a big name in the rock scene and am aware of both the alleged and the proven unsavory exploits of Falling in Reverse's frontman Ronnie Radke, which by the way, there are f many, though this video won't be detailing them for reasons that will be explained later on, I have only had the briefest of brief past dalliances with music by the band itself, meaning that despite knowing about Ronnie Radke's escapades and acknowledging that Falling in Reverse has existed for over a decade, I still didn't really know what Radke's and Falling in Reverse's music sounded like, even though I know how many music critics, despite how the band has a rabid and loyal fanbase, have used Falling in Reverse and Ronnie Radke as a punch punching bag in the past, a punching bag filled with many dicks. But speaking for myself, I generally do not get into artistic hate campaigns over art that I have not experienced for myself. Hell, I don't even really get that angry at bad art that I have experienced anymore. Disappointed and frustrated? Sure, but not angry. Because similar to what I said in my Riot Fest 2024 Part 1 video, despite how this outfit makes me look like I'm bringing back angry, shouty YouTube man vibes from the early 2010s, I am neither a man nor am I very angry. Because to be clear, world, YouTube is being reclaimed by calm, transbian sapphics where it belongs, and that's a fact. This is why I approached listening to Falling in Reverse in good faith when it came to deciding to give their new album Popular Monster a few spins. If anything, I wanted to be fair and impartial in order to give this record and Falling in Reverse as a whole the good old college try. And my fair and honest take on Popular Monster is that it's f***ing terrible. To be open and honest, and we do prize honesty here, Popular Monster is a painful listen. In fact, it's an open assault on the very notion that art and music can be good, because after listening to Popular Monster a few times, I actually believe that music might be dead and falling in reverse skull f***ed its corpse. In other words, Popular Monster has a lot of problems. Which I guess that's one thing that this album and I have in common. Never let it be said that I never found Falling in Reverse's music to be relatable in some fashion. Albeit, unintentionally. Popular Monster has numerous issues, but one of the big ones is that it tackles many different styles of music in a way that feels less eclectic and more of an inconsistent hodgepodge of a listen. Like there are elements of metal, rock, emo, pop, hip-hop, rap, and even country music that all cause this album to feel poorly cobbled together and dissonant. I mean, to be clear, Popular Monster is not a cohesive listen. And while I understand that a few songs on the album were released as separate singles before the album was even announced, meaning that this LP is more about individual tracks rather than overall cohesion, Popular Monster just doesn't culminate into anything greater than the sum of its parts. Which is especially a problem when all of those parts are dog shit. Because to be blunt, I'm absolutely astounded by this album's creative incompetence. In fact, I am absolutely floored at how Falling in Reverse and its frontman Ronnie Radke dip their toes into so many different genres like rock, metal, pop, hip-hop, rap, and country and just be god-awful at most of them. Like this album belongs in the Guinness Book of World Records for musical ineptitude on a monumental scale. In terms of a country track like All My Life, Radke's voice lacks the grit needed to pull off a country song. While sure, as a metalhead, I might not know all that much about country music, but I do however feel confident in saying that a good country voice requires some gravel, the earlier mentioned grit, and character. Even songs about a man aroused by a sexy tractor. A good country voice just requires a seasoned personality, something that Radke's cleaner and pop metal vocal influence just doesn't have. And then in terms of the rap and hip hop influence tracks like Watch the World Burn or Trigger Warning, Radke's voice is missing the necessary lyrical flow that those genres necessitate. Like when either spitting out lyrics in quick succession or going with a slower approach to his rhymes, Radke never really finds rhythm on these tracks, and that's all before once again acknowledging that his voice just isn't suited for this type of music because similar to my critiques involving Radke dipping his toes into country music, he lacks the type of vocal character that would make rap and or hip-hop work. His lighter vocal register just doesn't fit in with the tonal style that he is going 
going for, as well as the tough guy posturing present in the lyrics. More on that later. If anything, on a track like the album opener prequel, Radhi often sounds like a bargain bin epic rap battles of history vocalist, but where epic rap battles of history is meant to be taken as a joke, Radke's performance is unfortunately sincere. Sad. And Radke's inability to do country, hip-hop, or rap justice is especially highlighted, or low-lighted rather, because there are plenty of guest vocalists on the album, like country singer Jelly Roll, rapper Tech 9 and such, who severely outclass and overshadow Radke on his own band. Man's album, very much akin to how an Iowa fried pork tenderloin sandwich overshadows the bun. Like, these are artists who are masters of their respective crafts in regards to their genres of expertise. For example, Jelly Roll's voice has character and Tech 9 has lyrical flow, despite how he spits out bars as fast as I spit out splooge, which that's why they call me the cum guzzler. In other words, Radke just doesn't have the talent to pull off these different lyrical styles. It just all falls flat. Admittedly though, Popular Monster does have some redeeming qualities and moments. In fact, the closing track that reimagines Papa Roach's new metal classic Last Resort as a somber power ballad epic that sees Radke belt out the lyrics as if he were Elsa in Frozen overall works. And the third track, Ronald, is fairly solid because it is a straightforward metal song with minimal rap elements within it, with those said minuscule rap elements coming from Tech 9 who, as stated earlier, is good at that shit, proving that Ronnie Radke should just leave Radke rap and hip-hop to the professionals, because make no mistake, Ronald is a decent metal song that highlights how Radke's vocal style can work when he sticks to his rock, emo, and metal wheelhouse that originally gave Radke his first big break with Escape the Fate, a band that I'm admittedly only passingly familiar with, but I am confident enough to state that they were, you know, a rock band, all the way back in the 2000s. Additionally, Ronald also proves that Falling in Reverse's other non-Ronnie Radke musicians do have quality musical chops as well. If anything, the riffs and the percussion are energetic and showcase how lead guitarist Max Gorgiv, rhythm guitarist Christian Thompson, bassist Tyler Burgess, and drummer Luke Holland can make valuable contributions to the band when actually playing the type of music that Ronald embodies. But the problem here is that those said musicians often don't get the chance to play that said type of music on the rest of Popular Monster. Sure, a lot of songs on Popular Monster feature some solid guitar riffs, breakdowns, and etc., but those moments are unfortunately surrounded by Ronnie Radke awful vocal approach on this album, i.e. the abundance of bad rap, hip-hop, and country tracks. To put it more succinctly, the LP's moments of medley goodness are rare sonic oases in this vast, empty musical void of suck. While yes, many songs on Popular Monster feature flashes of creativity, i.e. there are some decent guitar riffs and Radke does some vocal screaming, which adds some level of personality to the proceedings, because spoiler alert, it's important for art to make us feel things a Aside from the endless pit of existential despair. Oh, f it's an election year. But this doesn't alter the fact that these moments are few and far between. Moments that are unfortunately surrounded by a distinct lack of guitar riffs and instead feature stock standard hip hop beats, Radke's voice sounding robotic and overproduced, and a laughably horrid approach when it comes to lyrical flow in Radke's raps, overall ensuring that Popular Monster is just a miserable listen. Misery, misery, misery. And that's even before we get to the putrid lyrical content mostly because the bad thematic messaging and meaning of Popular Monster is kind of ugly. Kind of like the face I make whenever I wake up in the morning and realize that I smell funky. It's just not good. See, the lyrics on Popular Monster generally revolve around two ideas. Firstly, there's Radke's earlier mentioned tough guy posturing, because you know, Radke is all about saying what he wants, even though it might get him canceled or be viewed as the bad guy. And secondly, Radke sings about how he is misunderstood and sad, overall wondering why the world is so damn mean to him. Now, for many of us who are unfortunate enough to be terminally on the internet, avoid this fate if you can, for the love of God, save yourself. These types of lyrical themes are red flags, the type that you'd use to spot a potentially toxic personality. Because you know, whenever someone with a certain cultural status simultaneously bemoans the idea of them being canceled and viewed as problematic, and then espouses their belief that they are being misinterpreted and wonder why many view them in a negative light, there should always be a follow-up question to this. That question being, why? Why are people 
criticizing them? What did they do or say to cause that kind of backlash in response? And in terms of Ronnie Radke, the answer is a lot. And this might sound a little like a cop-out on my part, but I can't really explain in full detail the extent of Ronnie Radke's past without potential consequences. Mostly because Radke has filed defamation lawsuits before, and seeing as Biological Riley is currently a small YouTube channel, I don't really want to poke the proverbial bear. No relation. So I will just say that Radke has served prison time before, has had many allegations against him, some of which have admittedly been recanted. Please don't sue me. And has a certain history of saying stuff about the transgender community that, according to this transgender woman, is kind of shit. If you want to know more about Ronnie Radke's history, I encourage you to do some research on your own, but I'm not going to talk about it in any more detail because of the earlier mentioned reasons. I value. But what I will say is that Ronnie Radke's past controversies don't do the music on Popular Monster any f***ing favors. In fact, between Radke's personal life and the lyrical content on the album, it's basically impossible to separate the art from the artist here. Like on Popular Monster, there's no way to disentangle Ronnie Radke the person from Ronnie Radke the musician because they are both basically the same. They're the same picture. And unfortunately, as stated earlier, the music within Popular Monster is of such poor quality in and by itself that it can't really create any sort of separation between Radkey and the music. Because you know, it is possible to still enjoy and appreciate good art, even if it was made through or by problematic means or people. Hell, this is why I still enjoy a lot of Disney movies, even though Disney as a corporate entity is an intergalactic cock weasel. But sadly, Popular Monster just doesn't get the same grace here because the album is bereft of any form of musical quality. More than anything else, it sounds like an outlet for Radke's whinging. Your lips are moving and you're complaining about something. That's whinging. Because make no mistake, Popular Monster is a vehicle for Radke to whine about his problems and does so in a way that even further highlights how his voice just isn't suited for hip-hop and rap because where those genres usually have vocalists embodying a certain earned machismo, Radke sounds like a grown man-child complaining about the repercussions to his actions. He sounds like someone who didn't grow the f*** up, and not in the fun way, but in more the, dude, you should probably practice some self-reflection of some sort. Like, it's honestly kind of sad. Hashtag Ronnie Sadkey. And admittedly, there are other moments of vulnerability that Radke showcases on Popular Monster. Like on this album, there is the occasional song that just revolves around Radke's mental health more so than his various grievances that he has with others or society at large. Songs that at minimum do carry thematic weight. And honestly, I do sympathize with Radke in those moments. Like regardless of whether or not these songs revolving around the bad state of Radke's mental health were inspired by his personal troubles, internal depression, or other mental illnesses that we are not privy to, or a sense of grief regarding the 2020 death of Falling in Reverse's rhythm guitarist Derek Jones, Radke shows that he has the capability to convey a sense of emotion that is understandable for those of us who are going through our own mental health struggles. In fact, the earlier mentioned good cover of Last Resort clearly comes from a lived place of personal turmoil, and voices in my head, at least lyrically, just encapsulate what it feels like to be in a bad mental headspace. As I said, regardless of my view of Ronnie Radke and as a person or as a musician, I sympathize. But here is the thing, those moments are few and far between on this record. If anything, the success of the Last Resort cover is just a one-off thing, Voices in My Head is still ultimately a bad song due to the earlier mentioned piss-poor melding of genre styles found on this LP, and a lot of the album is ultimately lyrically about personal grievance, ensuring that any emotional poignancy on Popular Monster is minimal. Sad. In conclusion, Popular Monster is a terrible album. It overall has questionable writing and lyrical content that sees Falling in Reverse dip their toes into several different styles of music, but failing miserably at most of them, all to the point that even the occasional good riff and vocal hook is vastly overwhelmed by a deluge of ear-grating sounds that masquerade as music, like how the aliens in They Live pretend to be human. It just doesn't work. It is overall a bad album. And look, I'm all for genre fusions. In fact, I believe that experimenting with ideas outside of traditional rock and metal songs writing is one of the best avenues to keep this genre fresh and relevant in pop culture's counterculture. If anything, it just injects the scene with innovative ideas to help it evolve over time, meaning that it's important to do for the health of the music. And that's something that I can appreciate. I mean, come on, 
I enjoy sleep token, poppy, and such. I am just okay with bending genres, much like how I bend genders. But here is the thing. Genre fusion has to make sense in both concept and execution. It has to melt together with natural cohesion. And unfortunately, Falling in Reverse just doesn't do that on Popular Monster. Sure, the band tries to mix and match genres, but Falling in Reverse's ambition ultimately exceeded their technical ability here. Like, make no mistake about it, Popular Monster is genre confused, thus feeling like an inconsistent mess that is not appeasing to the ear. Ensuring that the only people I recommend Popular Monster to are for those that hate themselves and have no career aspirations. Because everyone else should probably stay the f away from this album. Just put on a hazmat suit and confine Popular Monster to quarantine. Save your innocence while you can. are moving and you're complaining about something, that's whinging. 